Hi everyone, my name's Amy, welcome to Bustle of Jetty. I'm here in our museum to uh, talk to you a little bit about this fantastic place and uh, teach you some interesting things about conservation and plastics in our oceans. So here is our amazing jetty, 1.841 kilometres long, the longest timber jetty in the Southern Hemisphere and the second longest in the world. is our fantastic solar powered jetty train, the Stock of Preston Express, which is coming along right now. Okay, so here at the Bustle and Jetty, we have our fantastic solar powered red train. We also have an underwater observatory, which is one of only six natural aquariums in the world. But in this particular module, I am going to be talking to you all about the history and heritage of the Bustle and Jetty. And we have a worksheet to go with it. So if you haven't downloaded your worksheet yet, Pause the video now, make sure you download it so that you can answer your questions while you watch this particular presentation. Okay, so I'm gonna move over to our interactive screen here in the museum that shows us that when the Bustledon Jetty was first built in 1865, it was only 176 metres long. It was really quite short and it was built to get timber onto ships. And timber from the Southwest was shipped all over the world. There's some in the London underground and many other places around the world. The jetty was extended eight different times over the years and then it got longer and longer and longer until it reached its final length of 1.8 kilometers in the 1960s and as you can see there's lots of ships there but shipping actually finished at the jetty in 1972 so we didn't have any more shipping occurring and the jetty wasn't maintained very well after that time and unfortunately something happened in 1978 In April 1978, severe tropical cyclone Albi swept down the West Australian coast. Now that is very unusual for a cyclone to get this far down, but it caused extensive damage and in particular, about 700 metres of the Bustleton jetty was destroyed. So I've got a photo over here that I can show you. As you can see, with this photo here from just after Cyclone Alby, you can see a large missing section of the jetty here and also some collapsed areas as well. So there was a lot of damage. And at the time, it was decided that the jetty was beyond repair and that it would be demolished. Now, the people of our amazing local Bustleton community did not want that to happen. 
They wanted to save the jetty. So what happened is they formed a group. They formed a group to save our jetty. And I'll talk a little bit more about that over here. Many different activities occurred over the coming years to help save the jetty, to raise funds and to raise awareness so that our amazing jetty could be saved for future generations and maintained. So in 1979, John Bustle actually walked the jetty up and back 151 times. And that was 580 kilometers over 14 days to raise money to save the jetty. And then what happened was the Save the Jetty Committee decided to start selling tickets for asking people to pay a fee to come onto the jetty so that that money could go towards maintenance and that still happens today. So here's the first little caravan here taking those tickets on the jetty. Now many, many things have happened over the years since our amazing jetty was saved and it's become a tourism icon and a place for recreation and fun. So let's go through a few more things that happened, good and bad, over the years. In 1995, the first jetty train was introduced. So the train would go up and down the jetty, taking visitors out to the end and back. And that train raised much needed funds over the years to keep our jetty maintained. Unfortunately, in 1999, there was a fire at the end of the jetty and it did a lot of damage right at the very end. So the section of the jetty was actually um, damaged for quite some time and it took many, many years to get enough funds and enough assistance to fix the jetty at the end. So in 2001, the buildings that we are standing in right now, the Interpretive Centre, were, were opened here at the jetty. Now these buildings have become iconic. The blue boathouse shaped buildings that everybody tends to recognise in Western Australia were opened in 2001. In 2003, our fantastic underwater observatory opened. And that is a place where you can go eight metres below the ocean surface without getting wet. How amazing is that? And you can see some really fantastic marine life out the windows. But I'll talk about that marine life in a different module, so keep an eye out for that one. In 2011, the jetty reopened after being closed for two whole years. It was closed for two years to have a full refurbishment. So what that means is the whole jetty was fixed up to really good, safe condition for everybody to use. So after those two years, there was a great big party. There was fireworks on the jetty to open it again after being closed for all that time. In 2015, the jetty had a very special birthday. It was 150 years old. And now, in 2020, it's 155. That's really old, isn't it? It is. So it's very cool to have something here that old that we still get to enjoy today. In 2017, we launched a brand new jetty train called the Stocker Preston Express. And just last year, in 2019, that train became solar powered. So we've had some really interesting, exciting things happen at the jetty over the years, but you've heard me talk a lot about the maintenance of the jetty. So we're gonna go over here now and I'm gonna tell you about some things that cause us a few problems here at the Bustleton Jetty. So our jetty is made of timber and even though timber is very strong and does a great job at holding up the jetty, there are some things that like to eat that timber. These guys. How gross are they? These are called Torito worms. And even though they're called a worm, they're actually a type of mollusk, a bivalve mollusk. They have two shells at one end and they chomp 
through timber. Now the problem with that is, if we left them to chomp through all of our pylons at the jetty, our beautiful, amazing jetty would fall over because all of our pylons would fall apart. So we can't have that, can we? We definitely can't. And here is a lovely piece of jetty timber to show you some of the damage that those Torito worms do. Can you see that, all of those holes there? Can you imagine if all the piles holding up the jetty were all full of those holes? It wouldn't be very good, would it? So, never fear. We have an amazing marine scientist here at the jetty called Sophie. And to treat the posts for Torito worm, unfortunately, we have to strip all the beautiful marine life off those piles to be able to wrap the piles to stop the worms getting in. So the, the posts are stripped, there's a layer of grease that goes all the way over and then a special type of wrap goes around in two layers. First of all, one that's kind of like glad wrap and then this mesh goes around and all of that stops those naughty little worms getting in to our timber posts. But what happens to all of that marine life that we have to scrape off? Well, it was very sad, but our amazing Sophie figured out a solution. Sophie came up with her PAL rehabilitation program, a world first, which she has since won a UN award for. So what Sophie figured out during her honours was that if she added some extra mesh to the piles, dived down into the ocean and picked up all of that marine life that had to be scraped off and reattached it to the mesh, guess what? It all started to grow again. So our beautiful marine life and the pylons under the jetty, which make a lovely artificial reef, was able to be regenerated. So what Sophie managed to do was help our marine life to come back onto these piles after they were treated for those Torito worms. And that is one of the ways that we are helping to maintain our fantastic Bustleton Jenny. Now, I have a bit of a challenge for you guys. After listening to this presentation today and doing your worksheet, I was wondering if you might like to do your own project on the Bustleton Jenny. Maybe choose one of those points in time from our history timeline, which you can download from our website. Maybe you would like to research our solar powered electric train, or maybe you would like to learn more about Sophie's Pile Rehabilitation Program. Maybe you want to learn about Cyclone Alby. All of those things and many other interesting ideas for you to do your own research project on Bustleton G history. If you need a little bit of help with that, we've got some fantastic books in our online shop that you might be able to find some of that information in. So make sure you have a look there and see if there's something that might help you with your project at home or at school. But that's all I have for you for now on the History and Heritage module. Stay tuned for our other two interesting workshops on marine life and also on conservation.